It's a cosine, no sign kind of Friday. Let's see what type of shenanigans we get into. You're listening to the Locked On Lease podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On at Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. What's going on, Dave? How are you feeling on a Friday? Feeling pretty good. Um, <clears throat> another weekend of... Uh... Wait to see who's going to get into the Stanley Cup final. I have no yeah. idea right now. <laughs> I know it's crazy, man. Like it's been, it's it's been so back and forth. Obviously, you got Edmonton and Dallas Game Five going down later tonight. Last night, you had Game Five in the Eastern Final, Florida coming through. Sammy Bennett uh, coming through in the clutch, and uh, they ended up winning that game three to two and take a three two series lead with that victory. I mean. Ah man, the Florida Pan. I was I was having this conversation yesterday. I was on Jim Taddy's show, uh, Yes Guy, and he asked me, Leaf fans would be happy to see the Florida Panthers win a Stanley Cup. And I I don't know if I was on board with that one. I was like, I don't know. I, I think I'm a no guy on that one, Tap Man. I don't think the Leafs want to see the Panthers go on to have success and win a cup. Uh, I'm curious, like, where you sit on that. Do you think that? Leaf fans sit on like Team Florida, like if if Florida or Edmonton, I guess. Like who who do you think Leaf fans would rather see win a cup? If you had two two two, probably Florida because I think the hate for Edmonton, yeah, is just that much greater. And also, there's a segment of the fan base that doesn't want to see Connor McDavid win in Edmonton and want to consider Jump his ship. other options down the road. Yeah. Just, yeah, that that's basically what I said. That. I was like, well, yeah, I, was like, oh, dude, I don't know if people want Edmonton winning a cup either, but uh, we'll see, man. There's four legitimate teams that could win a Stanley Cup at this point. Uh, I'm excited tonight. Game five should be should be a fun one. Uh, today's show should be a fun one. We're going to kind of just do a full cosine, no sign episode. So we both got three in the chamber, we've got two leaf related ones, and then we've got one kind of league wide that we'll uh we'll we'll go through. So let's kick things off. Why don't you give me your first one to start things? All right. So mine is the Leafs should make Brandon Montour their number one target in free agency. That's so funny because mine is very, very similar to that. God um man. that's such an interesting one. I should Brandon Montour be the number one target in free agency? I'm going to no sign it. I'm going to no sign it. Like I know a lot of people think Montour is kind of the, the could be like the missing piece, like that right handed puck moving defenseman who could play on your power play like that. that He is something that I think the Maple Leafs do need, but is he the number one target? Like he's kind of had a little bit of regression from a year ago. Um, not to say that I don't think he'd be a good addition to the Maple Leafs, but he's not, you know, that point per game defenseman like he was a season ago. He's getting a little older. Um, and I think he's going to be costly. I think he'll be expensive because I believe there'll be many teams who would look at Brandon Montour as kind of a, uh, 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 you know, a missing piece type of player. So you might have to get into a bit of a bidding war to bring in Montour. Like, I don't know what you're comfortable at signing him, but I don't know if I'd want to go deeper into like the $6 million range, which is what it sounds like it would take to sign Montour. I, I personally would rather like them go after Chris Tanev than I would a Brandon mm-hmm. Montour. I think I'd rather Chris Tanev. So I'm I'm going to no sign it uh, just because I think that there are a couple of other free agents who I think the Leafs should prioritize because I don't think getting into a bidding war over Brandon Montour would be uh, would be a wise decision. 
Yeah, I, I for me, it's like if you're looking for a top right shot guy that that's kind of can do things on both sides. That's where I like the monster fit. But I also I get concerned about the fact that he is probably the, the top right handed shot option on the blue line heading into free agency. And that's not going to be cheap. And I think a lot of teams will throw a lot of money at him. And I just don't know if the Leafs are going to be able to. <laughs> gonna be able to match whatever teams wanna wanna well, offer. It'll take term too, right? It, it'll take some term to to get that deal done. Um, considering how many other teams are gonna be interested, but you know he had a career year last season, seventy three points in eighty games, uh, and it fell off quite drastically this year, just thirty three points through sixty six games. So you know, average just half a point per game um, compared to like basically a point per game last year. Uh, which is closer to his norms typically where the year before that was 37 uh, points in 81 games, 11 goals. So, you know, I, I just, I thought, I think last year was a bit of an anomaly year for him. I don't know if I see him as a 70 point guy and he might, and he might value himself as that. So it, it depends on the contract. Like it, realistically, if, if you give me the same contract, Tanev and Montour, I probably would rather Montour, but I think Tanev would come at a, a much cheaper rate. So for those reasons, I think Tanev also brings you a little bit of that piss and vinegar that Tree Living and Barube both love. Um, I think I'd rather Tanev, yeah, as, as the number one overall trade target. That was my first one, so I'll come up with a different one because I got a couple of extras. But my first one was going to be the number one fridge and target should be Chris Tanev over Montour. Mm. So it's funny that we both kind of – had a very similar similar one. So I'll move on to the next one here, which I think is uh, one that was chatted about quite a bit in our Discord over the last 24 hours, and it's that Joseph Wall and Laurent Brassois will be a winning tandem for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to no-sign it because Brassois, I think... I understand, like, a lot of people look at his stats <clears throat> and think, like, oh, yeah, he'll be a, like, give him a little more playing time. He can be a really good 1B guy behind Joseph Wall. But the issue is you have to consider where he was playing. Like, Winnipeg was one of the best defensive teams in the regular season last uh, this past season. And Brissois only played, what, 23 games? I think it was. Yeah. Like, he is a pure backup when you play him in the games, like you know what you're gonna get out of him. But we also know that when you take a backup and you play him more than maybe he should, it doesn't necessarily the, the numbers don't necessarily translate. Um, you know, that's not to say he's not a good goaltender. I think he'd be an excellent backup, but you also have to consider, you know, the Leafs are probably gonna want someone that's capable of playing more. Of capable of playing more games, right? And you know, I look at it, like his the most he's ever played in the NHL was twenty four games with the Golden Knights a few years ago, and he had a sub nine hundred save percentage. Like, there's there's a little bit of inconsistency with the numbers and and things like that. Like, he'll have a good year, then he'll have a eh, subpar year. So, like, there's a little bit of inconsistency with Brossois' numbers as well. Uh, I, I just think also with, with Joseph Wall, you have to be so comfortable he is going to be able to play the, what, if we're saying, tw let's say, 25 games for, right? Yeah, That's he, like You're probably getting 55 yeah. games out of Joseph Wall. You're hoping 50 to 55 games. And, and like, if, if we get 55 games out of Joseph Wall, that's good. But can we really realistically expect that? That's that's a tough one. I, I like to see them bring in someone who's capable of playing closer to that 35 to 40 game mark if I were the Leafs. I mean, look, we also talked about going and get yourself just a bona fide top guy. Like, there's nothing, I, you know, I, I think that's, I think, closer to what the Leafs would probably look at if they're uncomfortable with what Joseph Wolf can bring next year. Well, I, we hope that's the case, but it sounds like, according to James Myrtle, he was reporting in the Leaf report that Brassois is a top target for the Maple Leafs. So it, it 
if if his intel is correct, um, it, it sounds like they're closer to leaning toward finding Wall a one B as opposed to making Wall a one B. And Laurent Bossois could be that guy. I'm with you though. I don't think it's a it's it's a winning tandem, um, just because I don't think either one of those two really have proven that they can play 40 games in a, let alone 30, 40, 55. Like they haven't played 40 games and neither goalies played 30 games in an NHL season. Mm -hmm. So you'd be asking one of them to do quite a bit. Um, something that they've, they've never been able to do. So we'll see what ends up happening there, but I think it's a very interesting situation in net for the Maple Leafs. All right. We'll continue playing some cosine, no sign on the other side. We both got another Maple Leafs related one, and then we're going to take it league wide with our final one. You're listening to Locked On These Podcasts, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time makes getting NHL tickets even faster and easier. Price on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to puck drop with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from receipt, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NHL tickets. Uh, they've got uh, last minute deals that save you up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy events, theaters. Whichever, they've got flash deals, they've got zone deals, they got all in pricing, and the lowest price guarantee, or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying NHL tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Turns apply again, create an account, use the code locked on NHL for $20 off first your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you here. And we are continuing to play some cosine, no sign today. So Dave, why don't you shoot me your second one? So second one for me here is the Leafs will run it back with the core four this season. Uh, uh, For those that are geez. not watching it on YouTube, Mike is giving a very dissatisfied look on his face. So is this, do I think they'll run it back or they should run it back? Do Which you one think this? they will? Not should they. Yeah, we all know right. they shouldn't. We all know they shouldn't. Okay, we all know they um, shouldn't. But... but. <sighs> I I'm gonna no sign it. I don't I don't think so. I think they they ran it back last year. It blew up in their face, and I think they know that there needs to be some on ice change as well. I do think that is the case, and eventually they will get to a time where they start talking trade, and I think Mitch Marner will probably end up uh, getting dealt. I, I I just I don't know if there's a contract waiting for him this summer on July one. And if that's the case, I think they probably try and deal him away, you know, try and work with Mitch Hayes. They're a team that, you know, next summer you'd be more inclined to talk to if they were to reach out uh, when you do become a, 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 an unrestricted free agent. If so, maybe you could talk to them and we could work out a sign and trade and both parties can end up being happy and we could move on from this. Um, I, I just... I'm not like a hundred percent on that happening, but I think it's more likely than not at this point that maybe this is the last we've seen of the core four together. So I'm, I'm going to no sign it. I think they, they do the right thing. And I do think they, they make a change. Yeah, I think, I think they do need to make the change. And like, I also think it's time that this team realizes that you need to look at players that are able to handle the pressure of playing in Toronto and, and, and in the playoffs specifically, right? Um, I wrote a story yesterday for Sportsnet about um, what Mark Messier had to say about Darnell Nurse. You remember, I don't like Darnell Nurse is taking a lot of criticism for how he's played in the playoffs. And like, I listened to what he had to say. I'm like, this could apply to a lot of players, right? 
like basically the first part of it was you got to be able to handle the heat this time of year right and then you know you're not going to play great for two months you're going to make mistakes you're going to hear about it essentially you're going to hear about it because you're not performing at the level that people expect of you uh that's the nature of the beast and if you can't handle that you're in the wrong business yeah and it spe- it goes back to that issue where Marner started throwing his gloves on the bench in frustration. Like, you, Mitch Marner is not going to have you know an amazing game every time in the playoffs, but you could tell that by the way his body language was in that playoffs, it was getting to him, and that to me is a concern, right? Like he puts, I think there was so much pressure on him from when he had the injury, from when he came back, he had that little like little with the media where he wasn't exactly thrilled about the way the injury was talked about like those things kind of accumulate and i think he was putting so much pressure on himself that he couldn't handle it and to me that's an issue like that should have been something that the leaves had like should have tried to figure out right with marner and it affected him in the playoffs i do think so right yeah but like how do you figure something like that out like that's not necessarily something you learn it's it's, it's either you got it or you don't like you either have the ability to deal with that pressure or you don't like, I don't know if there's something you can really learn, especially at this point in your career. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess that, that leads to, well, if he's, if he can't do it and if it's not innate, then we got to find someone who will. So I, I guess that, that goes back to, to proving the point. All right. My cosine, no sign. Um, <laughs> do I want to go here today? Do I want Uh-oh. to go here today? Uh-oh. I'm yeah, I do. The Leafs should give the C to Austin Matthews this offseason. Cosign, no sign, Dave. This offseason. This offseason? Yep. I'm going to no sign it because I think you can wait one more. Well, actually, no. I'm going to co-sign it because I think... If you're looking to take some of the, if you really want to show John Tavares that we're transitioning into a new phase of what is expected of him, right? And like I think Austin Matthews has deserved it, right? I, I not only just for his play on the ice because we know how he is on the ice, but I think off the ice too, right? I think it's time to have him take that responsibility as being the captain. And look, I understand for some people, like being the captain doesn't mean as much as others i do think it means something when you look at you know who the team looks up to right and who's expected to be the voice john Tavares has done i think what he could do i just think that you know you you want to go on a totally different shift in direction and i think that makes the most sense i just don't know if john Tavares. (laughs) that's a tough conversation to have with john Tavares because i know how much i know how much he really you know how much pride he has and that he is the captain and the responsibility that comes with it. And not to say that he's failed as captain because I think he's done some very good things. It's just, you, you're looking at, you know, Austin Matthews is signed here. I know he's not here for a whole lot of time, but he is here past what John Tavares is. Right. And we know that Austin, yeah. Matt, like this is, this is Austin Matthews team. This is like, he is the franchise player. It's yes. a little different than when John Tavares came here. He was the highest paid player. And, you know, the manager group by that time felt that he was the best leader out of the bunch. I think Austin Matthews has really grown into a different type of leader. More so about how he conducts himself on the ice, not necessarily off the ice, but on the ice. We know that he also leads by direction there as well. Do you think Matthews cares to have the C? I think so. Yeah. Like even I, if I think taking it away from John, like I think it'd be. Different I, I think that's the part that I'm I'm struggling with because I don't know if John Tavares wants to do that to to uh, Austin wants to do it to John. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he like he wants to have that all thrown at him, right? Like ah, oh, he's taking the C away from Tavares and this and that. I don't know if he wants to have that sort of thrown at him, um, but at the same time. At some point, I think he's going to get it, right? Yeah. I, I just think 
maybe they just wait until Tavares's contract is done and they say, look, we want to tra- transition. You want to stick around here? Good. But we're going to we're going to go in a different direction with the captaincy. It's happened before where the captaincy has changed, even when the players are still there. I just think maybe for one more year, you you let it be. I would like for it to be done sooner rather than later. I think John Matthews would be a good captain. I mean, my pick has always been Morgan Riley, but I think when you look at who this team follows the lead behind, it is Austin Matthews. I, I think Riley was the pick originally when they were choosing a captain well, five years ago, four years ago, whatever it was. Uh, he was also my pick, but I think as Matthews has progressed and as he's matured, I think that he's kind of become the guy who it's it just, you know, you're next up. It just makes sense for him to to wear the C and be the next captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, you know, I guess why delay the inevitable would be kind of the the answer to that. And to your point, yeah, we've we've seen it before. Uh, we saw it in San Jose. Uh, L.A. Kings uh, end up going from, what, Dustin Brown to Anze Kopitar while Brown yep. was still there. Um, you know, I think, uh, yeah, we saw it with the Sharks a couple of times, actually, um, with all three of, like, uh, Pavelski and uh, Thornton and Marlowe all kind of alternating the C at points of their career. So, you know, it's 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 happened. It's not common but it has happened in the past with varying success so it'll be interesting for sure although jt is a pretty prideful guy so i i would be curious how that would affect his his psyche so <laughs> like we'll I, I think the question we'll here too that. though is if if you want to keep jt around past this year and want him to take less money take take away the c would probably hurt a little bit in that desire to do so like i I think there's no chance that Tavares is captain moving forward after this contract is up. I could see them waiting a year and then making that transition after his contract is up, but I don't, I don't, uh, there's no way in hell that if he resigns, he remains captain for like the duration of that next contract. I, I don't think that's the case. I think that like, two years from now, there certainly will be a new captain regardless if Tavares is here or not. That I am certain of. Mm-hmm. All right. One more. What's yours? We'll take a, we'll take a break. Yeah, we'll come we'll back. We'll get into the... Uh, we'll go around the league. We still got our league-wide co-side no sign to get to. So we'll do that next. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you as we are each and every Monday through Friday. We are a five-time-a-week podcast. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts at and also up on YouTube. Hit subscribe and get yourself a daily dose of that Maple Leafs content. Uh, we're going around the league a little bit with this final cosign, no sign here. Um, so, Dave, why don't you kick things off? All right. Uh, I always hate changing my picks on the fly when it comes to the cup final. I'm oh. still not going to because I still think it's the Dallas Stars that will win the Stanley Cup final. Okay. But is there a chance that the this is the Florida Panthers year? Yeah, cosine, 100%. Is there a chance? Yeah, all four teams have a chance. A thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this Florida team and the way that they played last night against the New York Rangers, it wouldn't surprise me if they won a Stanley Cup. Uh, They look like a team that's prepared (laughs) and ready to win a cup. You know, like they, they, they might be the best team remaining, Dave. Like uh, I also, you know, thought for a long while that Dallas was the best team left in the Stanley Cup playoffs. But the way that Florida really has, you know, handled New York with, with ease, like they've, to me, they've been the better team in four of the five games in that East final. And, and you know, the Rangers and Shesterkin kind of stole one to make sure that this wasn't a, a five-game finish. Um, but, I mean, Florida very, very possibly could end up winning the Stanley Cup. And th- they'll actually, if they make it to the final, they'll be the first team to go from finalist and get back to the Stanley Cup 
um, since Pittsburgh did it in 2009, and Pittsburgh finished the story in 2009 when that happened, when they went back to the Stanley Cup final um, as finalists and then won the Cup the following year. Wouldn't be shocked to see the Florida Panthers do it. It's a good team, man, and they're getting really solid goaltending from Bobrovsky. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to co-sign it. The Florida Panthers certainly have a shot to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I just think, like, even not just last night, but, like, the th- last three games, yeah, they have they have just outplayed the Rangers. And, like, to me, <clears throat> what's kept the Rangers, obviously kept the Rangers live has been Shesterkin. And, oh, man, I... I I was so convinced that this was going to be the Rangers' year to go all the way. But I also just think that Florida's got that team game going. Like, everyone's kind of pulling in together. They've got that that relentless forecheck is what's really doing it for yep. them. Yep. And Gustav Forsling, from waiver Dude, claim what the hell did- <laughs> to top. Like, when we were looking at the Panthers' defense every year, like forcing wasn't one that we said was bad, but we're also we never expected this from him. No, he was like, yeah, you know, it was like you know, a tweener, number four, number five kind of guy. Like it's he's he's a dude they plucked off waivers. Like he at one point he was looked at as a, a third pair guy. Um, I think he's like a fourth or fifth round pick, and he by the Canucks he was traded to to Chicago. Who sorry, apparently, what's that? Carolina put him on waivers. I forgot that. Yeah, he was traded to Chicago, and then he ended up in Carolina, and then Carolina puts him on waivers and then plucked by uh, Florida and is, you know, blossoming into a, a top pair guy, not just a, a top four, but this guy's this guy's been unbelievable. And the way that he's jumping up into the rush now, too, providing offense, got four goals. He leads the, the Panthers with 11 points from the back end. He's Dude, he's blossoming into uh, into a, a two way stud. Which he's is he's awesome to see. Like like when you talk about like Brandon Montour, and if he leaves, they got Gustav Forsling right there to kind of slot into his place as like an offensive guy. Yeah, it's a little yeah. it's a little unfair. <laughs> yes, you know. slightly, slightly, I would say. <laughs> would love one of those guys here in Toronto. Would love it. Um, cosine, no sign, Dave. I already know your answer. Game seven of the Stanley Cup final being pre-scheduled for June 24th is an abomination. Yeah, cosine. Why? Right. Why do why are we having this series go till June 24th? It's May 31st, and it's possible that by the end of the weekend, it's possible that by Sunday, June 2nd, we could have completed the conference finals right that's the earliest that the conference finals yeah. could be completed technically is sunday and if that's the case no matter what the stanley cup might not get handed out until june 24th if it goes seven games ridiculous it's ridiculous because i mean obviously it's like taking three weeks to do the Stanley cup final which it's like you crammed all these other games and all these other rounds, but then you want to like, sh- like at some point, Pete fans are going to be like, like, are, like when is this series going to get done? I understand like, okay, certain days you may need travel, but I think what's really screwing this all up. Well, it's, is 16, the NBA days. Final. it's 16 days. So yeah. game one, regardless, even if, if yeah. the, the conference finals end on Sunday, they aren't playing game one no matter what, until next Saturday. So there'll be six days off in between uh, the game six of uh, whatever, Sunday's game and game one. I mean, if this if both these go seven, then there's not as much of a break, obviously, in between, and that's kind of what they're hoping for. Um, so there's not a, a week of no hockey, but you've got game one on Saturday, June 8th, and then game two, Monday, June 9th, and then game three, a three-day break. So you go no hockey Tuesday, no hockey Wednesday. You go Thursday, June 13th, Saturday, June 15th, and then another three days for travel between game five, another three days for travel between game six, and another three days for travel for game seven. It's wild, wild how much travel time 
they're giving these teams in the Stanley Cup final. They're they're, they're doing they're they're doing what the NBA is doing, <laughs> in my opinion. Like like I I think oh, yeah. there I think there's a bit of the scheduling with the NBA finals because um, ABC ESPN have the NBA finals and the NA, and the Stanley Cup finals, so yeah. there's a bit of the broadcast conflict yeah. there. Yeah, but if you're talking broadcast conflict, then both teams alternate. Boom 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 I know. boom boom boom. boom oh, no. get a sport every night. That would be well, an easy way to do it. <laughs> but like the but NBA I finals, the I know the NBA finals start June six. Guess when they end? Like the same, no? I would imagine. Yeah, June twenty third. Yeah, <laughs> the NBA finals. Actually, technically, the NBA finals start later, but end a day earlier. That's the funny part between that and the NHL. It's, it's wild. Like, it it is wild, and like I I know some people are like, oh, that's really close to the draft. I mean, look, the front office guys are going to be handling the draft. That has nothing to do with the players on the ice. Right, um, but I mean, even the front office guys, like let's say you you this goes seven games. Like the draft is what? The 27th, I believe. Yeah. Is it the 27th? So that gives you 25, 26, 27. That gives you three days to... 28th. You know, 28th. 28th. Yeah. Okay, so it gives you four days to like go home, have the parade, and also get back to Vegas for the draft and be ready to go. It's just, it's, 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 it's a lot to get done in four days. And it's the reason why we've now, after this season, they're going to, uh, to uh, remote drafts is so that, you know, that you can cut down on that travel time. But here's something that, you know, hockey fans would prefer. Why don't you cut down on the time and schedule of the playoffs in general? Make the playoffs end like June fifteenth. Like that's that's yep. the, like just make sure that however you're starting your schedule, that all right the the last possible date for a Stanley Cup final would be like June fifteenth, mid June, boom, and that would give everyone like two weeks almost to kind of decompress after the season and also get ready to go for the draft. Even if you win the Stanley cup in game seven, you have your party, you have your parade, you go booze it for a few days and then you get back to business and you still have like 10 days to figure out what you want to do for your draft and, and whatnot. So that would just make the most sense, not waiting a full week almost to start this thing. Why everyone wants to get going. No one wants a week off to get rusty, especially the Florida Panthers. We saw what happened last year when they had, what was it, 10 days off between the conference final and the Stanley Cup final because they swept Carolina. They had 10 days off, and then by the time they got to the Cup final, they lost their steam. Bobrovsky was no longer, you know, Mm -hmm. the Bobs he was, and it it really cost them. So I'm sure Florida's like, yeah, I don't want that to happen again. Luckily, it sounds like it's possible that both teams could be in a situation where there's a bit of a layoff, but I'm sure – Neither team would want to be in that situation. Keep them moving. It's the playoffs. Let's go. It bothers me so much that they've predetermined that game seven will be Monday, June 24th. Oh, I hate it, Dave. I hate it. All right. Any last comments? Uh, No. <clears throat> I, I think uh, go way it ended. NHL's dumb with their scheduling. That's not something we haven't heard before. Yeah, 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 very, very much so. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms to receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more studio and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy the games this weekend. Enjoy Easton Cowan. He'll be in the uh, uh, I was going to call it the Calder Cup Final, the Memorial Cup Final on Sunday. So you can get a get a glimpse at future Leafs prospect uh, Easton Cowan Sunday at the Memorial Cup Final, the championship. So good luck to him. We'll come back. We'll recap it all on Monday's show. But until then, keep locked right here on Locked on Leafs.